that is why to cultivate our capacity of being happy is very important. The fact is that hap- uh, happiness is available. Conditions of happiness are available. If you know how to say bye-bye to the past and to say bye-bye to the future and go home to the present moment, and then you'll find that uh, you, are, you have more conditions to be happy than you have thought. Life is such a gift. Abundant. Abundant. Dear friends, while I was in Germany uh, last month, I was interviewed by a Christian uh, theologian about the subject of uh, a global uh, spirituality. How to bring about a global spirituality. Our retreat has something to do with uh, global ethic, the path of Buddha, of the Buddha, a Buddhist contribution to uh, a global ethic. And there must be some relationship between uh, spirituality, the spiritual, and the ethical. The five uh, mindfulness trainings represent uh, the ethic of uh, Buddhism. For lay practitioner, the five uh, mindfulness trainings represent the path of uh, morality, the ethic of uh, Buddhist path. The the 10 precepts of uh, novice, the 250 precepts for monastics, the 14 precepts for OI members. They all represent uh, the Buddhist uh, teaching on uh, as far as ethic and morality is concerned. And the one who interviewed me, he seems to <coughs> distinguish between the spiritual and the ethical. And he wants only to talk about spiritual. And I told him that anything can be spiritual. When I pick up my tea in mindfulness, and when I look at my tea mindfully and begin to drink my tea in mindfulness, tea drinking becomes very spiritual, very spiritual. When I brush my teeth in mindfulness, aware that it is wonderful to have the time to enjoy brushing my teeth, that I'm alive, that the wonders of life around me, brushing my teeth with mindfulness and with joy and with love, tooth brushing becomes spiritual. And when you go to the toilet, defecating or urinating, and if you are mindful, if you see the wonders of life, the many uh, uh, teachers of us have said that even uh, defecating, urinating is Buddhism. So urinating, defecating can be also very spiritual. (laughs) 
So there is a deep link between the ethical and the spiritual. And if you cannot see the spiritual in the ethical, your ethical, your ethic may be empty. You do that, but you don't know why you do that. And you don't enjoy doing that. Suppose you practice uh, the, five, the fifth training, not to drink alcohol. <laughs> not to use drugs. But you suffer. You still want to drink alcohol. You still drive. I want to use drugs. But you are in a situation where you have to practice the fifth uh, uh, mindfulness training. So the ethic that you follow is empty because you don't re see really the value of it. You don't see it has come from insight, from love. You don't, don't see a spiritual dimension. And that is why you don't like, uh, you know that it's good for your health, so you, you refrain, but you suffer. It's like uh, being a vegetarian. If you are happy eating vegetarian food, and you feel that you are lucky to be able to eat only vegetable and not uh, to cause suffering to other living beings. And there is a joy, there is, a, there is a insight, there is compassion, there is spirituality in your eating. So eating becomes a very spiritual thing. So we will find out during our meditation together that there is no, no barrier dividing the ethical and the spiritual, they are one. We, have, uh, we shall have uh, Dharma talks dealing with uh, the team. We shall have uh, Dharma discussions in order to share our insight, our experiences. But supporting these uh, kind of actions, we have our practice, our daily practice. We eat in mindfulness or listen to the birds and the sun and, uh, and the bell and each other in mindfulness. We practice uh, mindful walking, mindful sitting, mindful breathing, mindful eating. So in that uh, kind of uh, mindfulness and concentration, we shall have a powerful energy of mindfulness and concentration. It will help us get a breakthrough and unite our insight. We want to offer the path of Buddha to the world. We seek a kind of language that can, uh, by which we can share the wisdom of the Buddha to the world. And do, we do, do that not as, uh, not as scholars, but as practitioners. So our insight comes from our practice and not from our learning from books. And therefore, our practicing together of walking, sitting, breathing, eating, brushing our teeth is very important. It is at the foundation of our success. We shall have to uh, to offer a version, a new version of the five mindfulness trainings. A new version. So that everyone, Buddhist and non-Buddhist, can see this is the path for the whole world. During our winter retreat, we have done that during three months. Mostly with monastics. And after that, we had the French retreat. We also focused our attention on a new version of the five mindfulness training. 
and with the 21 day retreat, we do it again. The saga has done it once, twice, and now it's the third time. We want to go deep, and we need everyone for his or her practice, his or her insight. We want to offer the world our idea, our experience, our joy, as uh, in the form of uh, a text on global ethics. And we want also to, uh, to revise the fourteen mindfulness trainings. If you don't mind, we have two versions. One version for Buddhist is very easy because there are technical terms. And one version for everyone. You don't need to be a Buddhist in order to understand. And that is for the 14 trainings and uh, the five trainings. We set up an editing committee to do that during the 21 day retreat. So please volunteer and help. I have faith in the Sangha. You see that? There are those who say that uh, I know the present moment is very boring. These people are used to uh, to be in the past, to get caught in the past, to live in the world of uh, memory. Uh, these people would uh, dream about the future. expecting things that may happen. And uh, they have not really been in the present moment. And when they say that, uh, well, I know the present moment is boring, it means that they have never really been in the present moment. Why? Because uh, they have not got the habit. They are used to live in the past, and they consider the past uh, as their home, always uh, sliding back to the past. And worry about the worries of the past, and uh, become fearful about uh, what was uh, fearful in the past, and so on. And uh, they have the impression that the past is their home. They are used to it. They feel more at home in the past. But the present is life. It is uh, a world to discover. Your, pre- your body is there in the present moment. Your life is, in, is there in the present moment. And the world is there in the present moment. That is why uh, it's so important that we go home to the present moment in order to truly live our life. When we hear the sound of the bell, We know the meaning of the sound. <coughs> the sound of the bell is uh, created, is invented in order to help us to leave the past to the future and to go home to the present moment. 
the sound of the bell is uh, not really coming from the outside. It comes from us. We have agreed that every time we hear the sound of the bell, we stop our thinking, we stop our talking. We breathe in mindfully and become aware of our in-breath. We smile and we go home to the present moment. So the sound of the bell is a, is a friend that reminds us that there is a life to live and that life should be lived in the present moment. You have to live your life. When you listen to the bell, you may allow the sound of the bell to penetrate deep in uh, every cell of your body. You allow, you invite all the cells in your body to join you in listening to the bell. because the sound of the bell can penetrate very deeply in every cell. And we know that all our ancestors, spiritual ancestors like Buddha, Jesus, Muhammad, Abraham, they are still alive in every cell of our body. So invite all of them to listen to the bell at the same time. All our ancestors are fully alive in every cell of our body. And when we listen to the bell deeply, all our ancestors listen to the bell at the same time. There will be mindfulness, concentration, and peace for everyone. So listening to the bell is a very deep practice. And if you listen like that, peace and happiness become possible during the time of listening. The sound of the bell will help to stop all kind of uh, worries and fear and thinking and imagination. The sound of the bell help us to bring our mind back to our body so that we be fully present in the here and the now. And uh, listening to the bell is uh, a very pleasant uh, practice and deep, deep practice. When you hear the bell, the first thing you do is to stop. <laughs> to stop what? There are many things that are going on. There is the talking, there is the thinking, there is the feeling. And uh, stopping is uh, a very important part of uh, the practice. Samatha is uh, stopping. There is a habit, there is an energy called habit energy that is in us. It's always pushing. We believe that uh, happiness is not possible in the present moment. 
We don't know when has begun that kind of habit, but there is a habit to think that happiness is not possible in the here and the now. We have to go and look for happiness somewhere else or in the future. That is a habit energy in everyone. And that is why we have been running. And uh, we know that uh, our parents have done that also. And the habit of running has been transmitted to us by our parents. And our parents have got it from our ancestors. So it's a long uh, habit, long, very long habit. We believe deeply that uh, if we go to the future, we might get some more conditions for our happiness. And that is why there is a course. There's a tendency to always running to the future and seeking for happiness. We are not comfortable in the present moment. That is why uh, it looks like uh, the present moment is uh, is boring, partly because of that kind of habit energy. So when we hear the sound of the bell, we are supposed to stop that kind of habit energy. We should bring about the insight that everything you are looking for, including your freedom, your happiness, your joy, including the pure land of the Buddha, the kingdom of God, should be, should be sought, should be found in the present moment. So this is a reaction, kind of uh, a very strong response to that kind of habit energy. And uh, stopping like that is not very easy. I remember one time I went to India and uh, helped uh, organize uh, retreats uh, for, uh, for the untouchable uh, people in India. Uh, many millions of them have embraced Buddhism because they think that Buddhism is the only path that can help them uh, get out of uh, discrimination. They are the lowest uh, class in society. They have been discriminated uh, for many, many thousand years. <coughs> and uh, there was a gentleman who was in the Buddhist society. Uh, he came from that class of the untouchable. The Dalit people. Uh, he has uh, an apartment in New Delhi. He has uh, his family. He's, uh, he has a comfortable uh, uh, material life. But he still carries the many, uh, the many habits of his class. I was sitting in the bus. We were going south. And I enjoy looking at the window. Uh, I enjoy the landscape of India. And when I turned uh, back to him, I saw him sitting in a very uh, tense way. He did not enjoy. Why I was enjoying uh, sitting in the bus <coughs> and uh, the landscape of India. I saw him very tense. I said, dear friend, 
I know that you, you are, you are uh, eager to make my uh, visit uh, pleasant and happy. You know that I am. I feel very pleasant, very happy now. So please relax. <laughs> Sit back and relax. Don't worry. He said, "Okay." So he sat back and relaxed. <laughs> and I look out the at the window again, I enjoy again. And a few minutes later, when I look back, I saw him as rigid as before. <laughs> because that kind of worries, that kind of feeling, that kind of uh, tendency to always struggle has been handed down to him by many generations of ancestors. And it's not so easy to just stop. And you need a friend in order to remember to stop. You need the sound of the bell. You need a co-practitioner to, from time to time, help you to stop it. You do not want to fight against that. Because it's, it's impossible to fight that habit energy. And the method that is prescribed is uh, to recognize the habit energy. The sound of the bell or a friend, or your mindful breathing will tell you that uh, the habit energy is there. And once you recognize it, you just smile to it. Hello, my dear habit energy, I know you are there. And when you, when, when you say like that, you breathe and you say like that, you are free from it. And every time we come back, you do the same thing, just to recognize the habit energy. And that practice is called uh, simple mere recognition. Mere recognition. You don't have to fight. Years ago, there was a young American practitioner who lived in the Upper Hamlet. In the first uh, two, three weeks uh, of his uh, stay in the Up Hamlet, he was so uh, concentrated and surrounded by uh, monastic uh, and lay practitioners. He was uh, protected and supported in his practice, so it was easy for him to stay in the present moment to enjoy walking and sitting and, uh, uh, and uh, working with uh, members of the up, up, uh, community of the Upper Hamlet. So that was a day when we celebrated uh, Thanksgiving Day. And each group of uh, people belonging to a nation uh, is supposed to uh, to cook a national dish of that uh, nation in order to offer to the ancestral altar. So he belonged to the American group, and the American group asked him to go shopping. So he went to Saint Fala Grand, I believe, shopping for his group. And during the time uh, he was in a marketplace, he found himself uh, not calm. He was trying to do everything quickly in order to, to finish. And he was uh, surprised because during the last three weeks, he did not have that kind of uh, feeling, the tendency to hurry up, to finish it quickly. 
but uh, he had the time to breathe in and ask the question that why this kind of attitude, that kind of com uh, behavior, that kind of uh, uh, feeling has come up. So he knew that uh, in the last three weeks, he had been uh, surrounded by good practitioners that protected him, that keep him, that kept him uh, in a present moment. And suddenly he saw something that is uh, the kind of insight he got while he breathed in. He recognized his mother because his mother is always like that, trying to, always in a hurry, trying to to do things quickly in order to finish. And he saw that, and that is his insight. And he said, hello, mother, I know you are there. <laughs> and suddenly, that kind of feeling, that energy of pushing cannot do anything more to him. Just recognize it, and then you are free. And that is uh, the method of practice called mere recognition. You don't have to fight, just recognize it. <coughs> Hello, dear parents. I know you are an orphan. I know you. And the Buddha also practiced like that. <coughs> Even after enlightenment, the Buddha continued to practice. Because the practice nourishes your happiness, your peace, your joy. So the Buddha was practicing like us, like we do. When I was uh, a novice monk, I learned how to invite the bell. Before inviting the bell, you have uh, to prepare yourself because you are supposed to be a bell master. You have to prepare yourself by the way of breathing in and breathing out. And uh, there is a, a short poem for you to memorize in order to uh, practice with the breathing. If you want to be a bell master, <coughs> the gata goes like this, body, speech, and mind in perfect oneness. Body, speech, and mind in perfect oneness. The second line, I send my heart along with the sound of this bell. I send my heart along with the sound of this bell. The third line, by all of you who listen to me, <coughs> overcome your forgetfulness. Forgetfulness is the opposite of mindfulness. Mindfulness is uh, body and mind together, and you are established fully in the present moment. And forgetfulness is just the opposite. Mind and body separated. You are not in the present moment. You don't, don't know what is going on in you and around you. May all of you who listen to me awaken from your forgetfulness and transcend the path of anxiety and sorrow. That is the fourth line. And transcend the path of anxiety and sorrow. So.
So the novice, the novice monk would hold a bell inviter. We don't call it a stick. And breathe in and out with the with the gata short plan. Body, speech, and mind in perfect alignment. I send my heart along with the sound of this bell. May those of you who listen to me awaken from your forgetfulness. and transcend the path of anxiety and sorrow. <coughs> and I, after having breathed in and out two times, I feel calm, I feel concentrated, I feel ready, and I am qualified as a bell master. <laughs> and then I invite the bell to emit a half sound, half sound. That's to one. To, uh, to one, the bell, and to one, the people, that uh, something will happen. A full sound of bell will happen. So this is a, a half sound. So beginning, uh, you practice uh, in breath, one breath, first line of poem, the second line of poem. And then you practice uh, breathing in, breathing out again with uh, uh, third and fourth line of the poem. And then you invite the half sound of the bell. In the tradition, we believe, we, uh, we agree with each other that the sound of the bell comes from the inside. And that is the the Buddha inside calling us home to the here and the now. So you have to pay respect to the Buddha. It's Buddha is calling you, the Buddha within that is calling you. So you have to stop. Stop talking, stop uh, thinking. and stop allowing the habit energy to carry you to run. We have been running for all our life. So when everyone hear the half sound, they know that a real sound, a full sound of the bell is going to be heard. And they should prepare themselves for the reception of the sound, the voice of the Buddha from within. So everyone is practicing breathing in, breathing out. At least one time. And that in breath and out breath is to help uh, stopping. It may be six seconds or eight seconds for you to practice stopping. Imagine 3,000 people practice breathing in, breathing out, and stop. The, power, the energy of stopping is very powerful. And uh, as a bell master, you should be generous. You should be allow people enough time to prepare themselves to stop completely in order to be ready to receive uh, the full sound of the bell, the voice of the Buddha coming from 
deep inside. And then when everyone is ready, the bellmaster will invite a full sound. 